Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Oh, I need some participation. Good evening. Good evening. With educators, I'm Dr. Sean Smith, Superintendent of Schools for the Metropolitan School District of Lawrence Township. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm so proud to be here to discuss the topic we have tonight, and that is the future of Lawrence Township Schools. We're going to talk about our facilities and its future. What do you think about this picture behind me, folks? My staff had seen this picture. This has been one of our themes this year, okay? Prepare to launch. But for parents, I want you to think about this community patrons. Those are our students. This is who we work with every day. We get the little ones, and then very quickly, they become graduates, and they become our future. So that's what the discussion is gonna be about today, folks, is putting things in place for these little young people. They come to us, and then those graduates who are gonna go on and do great things for our community. First of all, thank you for joining us tonight. We also have some folks here who are gonna be with us through social media, so I wanna thank Tom Britt from that Geist and the folks behind him for allowing us to preview this on social media. So we've got a lot more people in the room, that's okay. A lot of people can't be here for whatever reasons, but we'll use social media so we can get the message out. We've got a lot of distinguished individuals in the room, and as I go through our presentation, I'm going to introduce them. Uh, first and foremost, I have the gentlemen that are on the stage here because they're going to present to you, and I'll introduce them in just a second. But uh, I have one school board member, they can raise their hand because this is a public meeting today in which they get to sit in the audience as patrons and listen to what their superintendent is presenting to the community, and then later on, they're gonna be involved in the process to help us make some decisions about our future. So let's start off, let us start our presentation, and let's just first of all start with just a little bit of housekeeping. As you walked in the room, uh, many of you received cards. So those cards are gonna help us at the end of the program with questions. So uh, where are my assistant superintendents, Dr. Ricky? Dr. Gayline is still out in the hallway. They're gonna be in the room, those assistant superintendents, and along with Kathy Rogers from our communications division, we're gonna collect all those questions and we're gonna to try to answer those questions if time permits. I'm very conscientious about your time, folks. Uh, we're starting at 6.30, we'll be done by 7.30, okay? But if you have additional questions, I've got an entire team, including myself, we'll stay as late as you need us to answer any questions that you may have, okay? Let's go with our presentation. Kathy, let's start us off. All right, our mission. There it is, folks. Through innovation and dedication, the Metropolitan School District of Lawrence Township educates all students through graduation. And we just want you to see those pictures that are there. All right, let me share some information with our patrons. I, my faculty members, they know this, the staff members know. But over the last five years, community members, we've seen a resurgence in Lawrence Township with enrollment. We have grown by 1,200 students over the last five years. Okay? That is a direct reflection on this community and our patrons if people want their kids to be in our school corporation. That's a large number, which has had an impact on our facilities. Okay, Keep going, Kathy. You know our buildings. We have our buildings there, too, uh, there on the board. You know the number of schools we have. We do have two high schools. We put some information up there so that you will know in terms of our enrollment. We still have 16,000 students in our corporation. Uh, for community patrons, our assessed value is over $5 billion for the community. That's how much the value of our property is. And Mr. Shrees, I believe that's in the top 10 in the state of Indiana. Actually, I believe it's number seven in the state of Indiana. We have a very high assessed value. Uh, something there in terms of our, uh, our levies, in terms of taxes, how much we actually raise from taxes from you patrons in order to help us pay for our school corporation locally, and then just some facts in terms of our staff. We have over 2,500 staff members that we have. A thousand of those very important people are classroom teachers, okay? Very important. All right, I want to brag about the Metropolitan School District of Lawrence Township, the end product. You hear a lot about school data and how they perform, but we want to talk about the end product because what we've seen, if you look at that data there, the red line or the orange line is the state graduation rate. The blue line is MSDLT, it's Lawrence Township. Folks, five years ago, we had a graduation rate that was 87.9. We're at 92.7. 
Okay, 92.7. And our next stop is gonna be at 93%. Okay, we're really proud of that. I wanna let the public know, 4% of our students, remember we educate all students in our township, are students with severe special needs. 4% of our population. They will never be able to earn a high school diploma. Okay? So we want you to know that we are working hard to make sure that every single student in our corporation is successful. Okay. All right, the Board of Education, our locally elected Board of Education, uh, those are the five board members that you have elected to oversee the school corporation. Great people. Uh, got, we'll have probably a couple of them in the audience today, and which is great. They need to hear from the community. That's why we're having this meeting today. All right, let me share a little bit of the history. Uh, when I came to the school corporation five years ago, uh, one of the first things I did is I went around a tour to visit all of our facilities. I knew the background and history of Lawrence Township because I'm from Indianapolis. And Lawrence Township always led when it came to everything. They would win everything. They would come to their facilities and they would win. They would have the best facilities. But when I came back, I met with Roger Smith and we took a tour and I asked a couple questions. I said, Roger Smith, raise your hand, Roger. He is our chief of operations. He gets all the complaints. Every complaint. Roger, do we have a plan for our facilities? And Roger, if you know Roger Smith, He's one of the most positive individuals you will ever be with. He's positive. You have to have that when you have 2,500 employees complaining about air conditioning and heating. Okay, right, Roger? And he looked at me and said, Dr. Smith, no. And he had that smile on his face. We did not have a plan. So I spoke with the Board of Education, and the board granted me permission to put together a Blue Ribbon Facility Plan for Lawrence Township School. I'm glad that we had to do that because many of our buildings were beginning to age. We were a leader back in the 1990s and when we had a lot of growth and we have not since done a lot to repair our facilities. So we put together a comprehensive Blue Ribbon Facility Plan. We had Roger, a huge committee, about 90 people that went around with Roger and looked at all of our facilities. And that was the beginning of us to address our facility needs for our children, okay? So thank you, Roger. And so, Roger Smith, as our Chief of Operations, I want you to come forward and talk about that Blue River Facility Plan, uh, what we have done, and where we're going. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Dr. Smith said we have been working in a, uh, a Blue River Plan since 2014 and 15. And just to clarify, the dollars being used up to this point, uh, we've been able to do without no impact to use taxpayers. So right now, we're well over, or will be halfway as of this year, halfway to our elementaries, and uh, have done some work in the other areas as well. But tonight, I want to show you uh, what we have done uh, since 2015. Crestview was our first one that started actually in 13. We finished it in 15 full renovation, new gym. And then in 17, we did Mary Castle. And how I, some of you have been up 82nd Street. We also put a stoplight out there for safety and security uh, to move our parents in and out, as well as our buses. Uh, McKenzie Career Center, full renovation of the cosmetology and uh, culinary programs and actually grew the building a little bit to help expand those programs. And then Lawrence Central, and Lawrence North multi-purpose stadiums. And I want to clarify, they're not just football stadiums. Actually, the performing arts uses them more than football. So we were able to use uh, multiple groups on those fields at our high school. 2018, we just completed Skiles Test, full renovation, uh, new addition to a, a gymnasium, kitchen, and cafeteria and all classrooms, likewise Indian Creek and Harrison Hill. Uh, Harrison Hill, we did have to add some classrooms there. We added three additional classrooms to accommodate uh, the student population there. And then uh, Lawrence Central, Lawrence North Auditorium. You're sitting in a brand new auditorium that we renovated 
and uh, the kids and the students and the community uh, are using it as we are tonight. Also, in uh, uh, right now, we're currently finishing up uh, softball stadiums, both at LC and LN. And uh, matter of fact, I took a drive coming over here, took a little bit of advantage of the warm weather, and, and saw the girls on both fields out there practicing tonight. This year, uh, underway, the 2019 projects, uh, Amy Beverly Elementary, we have four portable classrooms out there, and uh, we're gonna be adding on to that building and, and uh, complete renovation and some site improvements. Likewise, Sunnyside. We have uh, three portables there on Sunnyside, and we're gonna be uh, adding the new classrooms, and of course, uh, new front ends, uh, and safety and security, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And then uh, transportation, we'll be uh, looking at a new facility for our transportation uh, departments. And then the multi-purpose athletic physical education, performing arts, track and field upgrades. Uh, basically in that area, we're gonna be doing the track and the, the field turf uh, upgrades as they have exceeded their lifespan. Now, I love pictures. I love props. Now, there are a few people in the room that remember these pictures. And I want to go back 50 years ago. Uh, there's someone in the room that can remember Lost Township 50 years ago. Wasn't a lot out here, was it? Hmm? How about 82nd Street? Why well, ain't traffic on 82nd Street? All right. 56th Street was vibrant. How about Pendleton Park? Oh, yeah, those areas were vibrant. But something happened 50 years ago the city began to expand out. It began to explode. And so, you know, some people do remember, how many of you remember the, the phones? Uh, <laughs> our kids wouldn't know what to do with those today, would they? All right, Ronald Reagan there, and Nancy. All right, that's a tough car there. All right, we remember that. Okay, some of us can remember those things. But let's look to the next one, because obviously the cost of things have gone up over 50 years ago. And look at those prices. Okay, when we began to have this conversation about what to do on some of our facilities, we had to put it in perspective. Uh, obviously, the average salary has gone up. Now, somebody help me with coffee. Why is the coffee going up that much? <laughs> huh? But to buy a loaf of bread, woo! Much has changed over the years, and we're very conscientious about that in Lawrence Township. We've been able to do some incredible things with our facilities, making some very good financial decisions as a community which would make sure we protect our taxpayers. At the same time, investing back in your buildings to ensure that your children have the best of the best. Now, I want to point out something. One of the greatest assets we have in this community is our children. Alongside of them are our educators. We are very, for very fortunate to have the award-winning staff that we do. I don't know if some of you know, we have the state's top teacher in Lawrence Township in Tamara Market who works at McKenzie. We have many award-winning staff members and my, my, my leaders that are in the room. I want to attract, as your superintendent, the best and brightest, but we have to have great facilities and programs for them, okay? We want parents to stay in our community. As I showed you, 1,200 more students in five years. So people are making the choice to conscientiously live and send their children to schools in Lawrence Township. So we want to make sure that we're able to maintain that. Let me show you more. Okay, uh, next I'd like to introduce uh, an incredible young man, two young men who are our leaders of our high schools. They get to come up and speak because they, they're large. We have two of the larger high schools in the state of Indiana. Uh, combined, they have almost 5,000 high school students. And today they're going to be equal. We're not going to break out in the fight between the parents of our dads because they get along during the daytime until they play each other in sports. We understand that. But I want to first of all introduce Mr. Franklin Bush, the uh, principal of Lawrence Central High School, and then next, Mr. Brett Krauser, who's the host tonight, principal of Lawrence North High School. Right. Thank you, guys. Good evening to you. Uh, thank you for being here. Of course, you can see uh, one of the original pictures of uh, Lawrence Central High School of 1963, okay, where it's currently standing. 
and we get a couple nice views uh, two years later, and then two years later when Lawrence Central evolved to eventually. Um, our last major renovation at Lawrence Central High School was in 1993. I believe that was my, my freshman year in high school. So 26 years ago was the last time that Lawrence Central had a major renovation. So I tell you, when I walk through the facilities right now, if you look at some of the pictures of the HVAC system, the electrical equipment, it's the original equipment before the 1993 renovation. So as I tell you, I look comfortable right now. I tell you, I was sweating a lot today in this suit because we had trouble with our climate control within our building. And so when we get into you know, teaching and, and learning and the comfort of our, of our students, we have issues in our building, all right? We have issues that we try to deal with and we try to accommodate our staff and our students uh, for. Um, when we look at our athletic or performing arts or just our classrooms, this is just one example uh, of, of some of the issues that we run across because it's the original. Actually, our tennis court, if we look at old, um, old plan at Moore Central High School, that's where the tennis courts have always been, even though we made adjustments to other place, places in the building. So we have places in, within our facilities that look like our tennis courts, that our students perform on, that traveling families come and view, and that our current families that we sit back and we talk to about uh, being Lawrence Central Bears or Lawrence North Wildcats, they come and they get to be a part of and that this is what they have access to. Um, again, more of our facilities. Uh, this is where our students um, drive, where we can just see the, the visual um, repairs that need to, to, to happen. This is in our performing, performing arts, and I know some of you guys are probably thinking, damage walls, fix it. Well, there's things behind the walls that cause this as well. And so we can patchwork and fix it, but there's things behind the wall that have been there since the original day that it's built. And so we continue to, to try to fix and update, but we continue to have issues and, and problems uh, with, with some of our facilities. Um, I know Mr. Krause will get into, into the classrooms part of it, but we do have outdated labs. Um, we have outdated classrooms. I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm 6'4", we have outdated chairs and tables. I struggle sitting down doing a classroom observation. And I have kids in my building, believe it or not, a lot of them bigger than me. And so imagine in a 90 minute block, the students sitting there, uh, even their teachers in some of their facilities sitting there. So really looking at bringing excellence, things that we can control into our buildings, into our classrooms, into our playing uh, platforms um, is major, you know, to us at Moore Central. And Moore Central, sorry. Um, <laughs> go <ahead. laughs> um, and going into our performing arts facilities, this is truly uh, our one of our storage rooms, and this is our uh, orchestra room. It's just outdated. And if there's anything you know about Lawrence Central and, and Lawrence North and Lawrence Township, we're a very strong. Uh, community when it comes into to music. Very strong community when it comes into to the world languages. Very strong community when it comes into our athletic world. Um, very strong community when you get to the exceptional learners and the type of supports and resources and, and uh, access that we provide. Personally, as a principal, as a parent, and a resident of Lawrence, what we're, we're running into is we're outdated. We're outdated. We're, we're, we're patching, but we're not fully fixed. And we continue to do this and run into issues and problems. Um, and we, we have to get to a point now where uh, we are the best. We, we go into our schools and we see championship banners. And we see um, things hanging up for historical uh, value. Um, but our facilities and pockets, auditorium, multi-purpose uh, outdoor facility, Great. I just give you the visual of, of imagine if our classrooms look like this. Imagine if our hallways were nice and clean and open. Uh, we got to visit Lake Central High School uh, and got to tour their building. They did a complete building renovation four or five years ago. It's just 21st century. It's new. It's it, it's it's done so much for their community. When you hear their their teachers and staff members talk about. The pride driving down their street 
and being able to visualize their high school and they're walking into the building. Because I know some people will say, well, my kids won't. Well, your kids actually will, regardless of their graduates or their kindergartens. This is our, these are our high schools. This is the pride of our communities. And we want to continue building a lasting legacy um, forever. And being a, a 96 graduate of Morris Township High School, I've had the privilege to come back uh, and be em em employed in this uh, great, great district. Um, but something Dr. Smith left out, he may include, I think 70% of, of our teaching staff live in the district. You know, I have, I have personally 15 staff members who have kids at Morris Central High School. And so maybe their kids, kids will come back and be Lawrence Central Bears and Lawrence Wells Wildcats. So there's a lot to be said about our tradition, where we're currently at, but I really challenge this is where we're going. So I, I thank you and then I pass it over to uh, Mr. Crouch. Right. Thanks, sir. <coughs> thank you. Ditto everything he said, but I still fit in the desks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I say. So uh, I don't have that problem. But with that being said, as you drove in here tonight, you saw this. And so if you look, we haven't changed much. We can all still go out there to the northeast corner of this building and take that picture down there that still says Lawrence North High School and, and it all plays. And so, as I say, ditto to everything that Mr. Bush talked about with what we have. We must provide an educational setting that is conducive for all of our kids. And I want our students, and I'll, I'll say this, I want our students to walk into our building and go, wow, this is my school. This is where I get to go every day. And people have choices today. That's the one thing. And so as we go in and we look at our pictures, a few things, our boiler room, and those that live here each and every day understand exactly what this means. So, given this, when the chillers don't make ice, we get really warm because we still make ice here at North Shore High School to go through that whole process of making sure our rooms are cool enough. So obviously in a classroom, you're gonna have people popping windows, doing things which throw things off because of that natural light and even having natural light. Um, so as you go through, you look at our, our roof. Flat roofs, rocks. Every once in a while, I'll take students up there. We have to understand different perspectives in our world. So it's actually really nice to go up there and look down at the city um, and get that perspective of Indianapolis. Yes, you do live here, but it's our reality. And so again, it's not that wow factor when you walk in. Now, I will tell you, when you get the wow factor, you walk into any single classroom at this high school and you watch that high performing adult leading kids, that's where you're gonna get wow. And I can look every one of you in the eye and tell you that's the case here. But when you walk in, as Mr. Bush talked about, furniture matters. The way we instruct our kids matters. The collaborative atmospheres matter. There's a reason why Google did what they did. There's a reason why Roche has changed the way they look. And so again, they want those collaborative settings. We're talking about collaborative settings, yet we have this big, large, square desk that looks just like the desk that you and I sat in, in school, with the same, now it's on a chalkboard, it's a whiteboard in the front. Everything looks the same. However, what Dr. Smith pointed out was on those, as we look at the cost of items, those things have changed. So a lot of times you can see pictures in education, they can take a picture from 1950, 1960, 1970, all the way up, we look the same. And they've gotta stop that. And so we're offering this. So uh, a media center. Yes, I want students sitting there grabbing a book and reading that book, great. But the space, our space again becomes outdated in this setting of what our kids can possibly do and how they learn. You that have children right now at home, understand your children learn different than we did. 
They access resources in different ways than we do. They don't take the note card and put it in a book for their research and make sure to put the bibliography on that note card so they can pull it out and do a works cited page. They actually just type it into the computer and it does it for them. Okay, and then they just choose the format. So it's different. So we need this space to look different. Our front facade, when you walk in here, most of the schools in Lawrence Township have a door that buzzes a visitor in. That is not the case at Lawrence North. We were at the forefront here at Lawrence North of putting in security doors. However, the one thing was our security doors are built beyond our main office. So yes, that bad guy can get in door one into the main office, not to our kids, but to get to my support staff, me, and anyone else that works out of that main office. It's not a buzzed in. There are improvements that have to be made. Um, as in, and these are not things any of us ask for, but the world has changed. No matter where your children or you live, where your children go to school or where you live. This is a picture I took, and this was one that got me. So I went down and started thumbing through yearbooks. And so I figured I'm gonna recreate this. So I found the classroom from the 1977 yearbook, chemistry, 1977. And I walked up to Mr. Pat Tankersley's classroom and I said, Mr. Tankersley, I'm gonna take a picture. And there's the picture. The only thing that has changed in that classroom is the sharp panel up front. Everything else is still there. And so we talk about STEM education, needs for our kids, maker spaces, opportunities for them. I want to produce chemists. I want them working in a space that looks like the space they're gonna look, they're gonna work in up at Roche. This is not it. But quality education is taking place in that classroom to prepare the kids to be chemists. And I promise you that because our kids go up to Roche and our interns doing the work there. They hire our kids. But the better we can prepare them, the better off we will be as a community. And so you can see here then a commons area. It's space. Yes, it's space, but it's not any longer usable space. And so again, you want your schools to be full of usable space, usable space by our kids, by our adults, by our community. The one thing we've got to talk about also is the way this building is used, the way Lawrence Central is used. Good and bad, these buildings do not shut down. Our communities continue to use them, and we want our community members to use our buildings. We want people in our schools, both while school is happening and when school closes and on the weekends. And so the more useful space you have, the better off we're going to be. And that is something we've learned through this process. So, um, you know, you can continue to see it. And I'll turn the mic over. There are things that we need. And as Dr. Smith said, we need them to support our awesome teachers and the beautiful kids that we get to serve each and every day. And the better students we produce, the better off we're gonna be as a community. So thank you. All right. Thank you, high school principals. Oh, they're stupid with passion, don't they, folks? We need that. Wow. All right, let's go over here. Robert Smith, are you ready? Uh, but before you come up, I've got to introduce another team of people. I said I was gonna make introductions, and we have a lot of them today. And that is our Early Learning Center team. So can I have my Early Learning Center principals to please stand? Got all four of them here. You are unique, Lawrence Township, and you have four Early Learning Centers that house our preschoolers and our kindergartners. We have four buildings. No one else has that. And then my four elementary principals, please stand. All right. And they're here. I see back there, Mr. LaRue. So you're LaRue from Forest Glen. He's there. They're all here because we've got four elementaries that we want to talk about also. And I'm going to have Mr. Roger Smith come and speak for them. They need a little bit of help also. When we started our plan, we looked at uh, two things uh, of our facilities. 
Number one was the age, condition of, and also the needs, uh, the most immediate needs. So a lot of our uh, uh, buildings that you'll see up here start off, for example, Oak Landon or Brook Park is a 1960 building and it's been touched, if you will, uh, four different times since then. The last time I think was in the uh, late, nine, uh, late 90s. And then Oak Landon was uh, a 1974 building and then it was added on to the North End in 99 and hasn't been touched since. So the majority of that building is still a 1974 building. Then we go to Winding Ridge and it was built in 2004 and uh, our, our newest buildings are 2007. So you'll see that all of our buildings are aging, not only the high schools, but also uh, the, the middle or the elementaries as well. Uh, again, Forest Glen and also Brook Park, uh, from not, not only inside the building, but also we look at the, the site, the entire site of these buildings. Forest Glen, we also look at uh, the, the high school talked about roofs. We look at the whole complete envelope of that building uh, to make sure that it is dry on the outside so we can fix the inside. Some of the things that we're going to be talking about, uh, you've heard here, uh, the issues to address. The majority of our buildings are 25 plus years, and uh, most of the items behind the walls, above the ceilings, below the floor, we don't see or touch. People don't know about, but that affects what happens in the classroom. Most of our HVAC <coughs> systems are original, and we want to fix that. Uh, security is a constant effort that we have put as a priority in Lawrence Township uh, for several years and we continue to do that as our society changes we want to make sure that our students our staff have the most uh, secure buildings uh, that they live in add multiple entrance and exit points uh, to our properties on the elementary most of them have a single road in and a single road out. And what we've been trying to do is separate our bus uh, traffic and our parent traffic and make that safer for everyone. And then, of course, update all the classrooms. So as we go through a building, we touch what I say uh, every inch of that building, and some of it might be light, medium, or heavy, but also taking care of the needs, as you have heard the principals talk about that they need with their <coughs> building. You also have talked about the, the potential solutions. You've heard about the economics. Uh, good schools in communities helps all of us. From your home, assess value, good school district help that economic development in the community. And we feel we're a, a big part of that within Lawrence Township. Upgrade facilities to serve the needs of our students today and in the future, you heard the principals, what they need within their classroom. Safety improvements, again, we're going to continue to look at that in each and every building and create a place of destination. You've heard the increase of students over the last five years, 1,200 plus, and more could come. We'll say right. Thank you, Mr. Smith. All right. Uh, Robin didn't say this, but there's some of us in the room who do plan to retire one day. And so we need that next generation. Are you with me, adults in the room? That next generation must take over. And that's what we're having a conversation about. I know sometimes as adults we think about our own children, but the children as an entirety. When I look out at graduation and I see those 1,200 plus kids, I think what's possible for our future in this country. We have some incredible students in Lawrence Township. You should be proud. Uh, their names come across all the time of the excellence uh, that they were given in the school corporation. And they come back and tell us that, okay? And so that's something that we need to be proud of. So folks, will you support public education? Go ahead, Kathy. All right, our future is right here, is what we're talking about. It's huge. The footprint that we want to impact, and go ahead, Kathy. Uh, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna show you what's possible. And then there's somebody in the room who's really smart, 
And I think there's a lot of people that Dr. Smith, how in the world are you going to pay for this? We're going to talk about it because that's really important to us. We have been very strong financially uh, in the school corporation. We want to stay there. And we have a plan that we would like to share with you. I got another guy we haven't met. He's very quiet, but he's good at what he does. And that's Mr. Shreves who will come up here in just a second. But I'm going to bring Mr. Smith back very quickly. Uh, and we've got some friends in the audience who have helped us design some possibilities for us. And I'm excited about Mr. Smith because that, that's 56th Street. Those of you who live on the south side of the district, just think of what Lawn Central High School could look like if it looked like that. Thank you. You mentioned some people. Um, I need help too. You know, I've got a great team out here. Just show your hand. Design teams, engineers, construction managers. Uh, we need help to do this. And it takes expert people uh, in their positions to come in and uh, they are working with us to see what I'm going to show you up here that could be in our district from the high schools and elementaries and we've got some draft conceptual designs of what we are considering uh, when we talk about the high schools, what they could become and also what they need to be. Lawrence Central, these renders, you're gonna see some of these, we talk about twins, we have two high schools and you're gonna see some similarities in uh, the, the facility itself as well as the site plan. Also, you'll look at Again, each of those areas within the building, we're looking at tearing some old off, adding some new on. We're not growing the building tremendously, but we're making it more efficient and more conducive to today and in the future's learning. Also, the site plans, uh, looking at Lawrence Central. I, I tell you what, it's a traffic nightmare over there. And, and what we have done in this by rearranging the building We've also added parking and traffic flow. We're able to separate. Actually, I can say now that on these plans, they're both about 1,200 shy, 1,200 in parking spaces. We never saw that at LC. Uh, LN has a lot of space here, and it's a little bit easier, and you'll see some of that as well. So uh, again, you'll see some uh, same rendering, so to speak, different colors. A front facade, that would uh, actually be facing hay. And then again, the building, uh, going in there. Some of the building we've touched over the years, so it's not gonna need as much, but the majority of the building will be and needs to be. North site plan, uh, over here it kind of scares me when you're driving a parking lot as big as it is. It's like a racetrack. Uh, you'll notice some uh, traffic flow and uh, uh, some greenery there that helps us uh, with the parents as well as student drivers uh, to make it safe and flow better. And also all of the external site areas, whether it's athletics or performing arts, uh, they have their space. Elementary, Brook Park, uh, a little bit of a facade change outside. Uh, looking at the uh, inside, we're going to, again, you'll see in the front entrance, Every school building front entrance will be touched. And again, a big part of that is safety and security. Uh, you'll see the roof park. The white roof is good roof. The black roof is bad roof. <laughs> and uh, a couple years ago, we were able to move through that. And you see, we've got more roofs to do at Brook Park. Oak Landing, that's a new facade. Again, a new front entry. Uh, classrooms, additional space. A different types of space within their uh, four walls. And also we're looking at uh, in the process of obtaining a little bit of a piece of property over there at Oak Landon just to the south and west of our site uh, actually next to the Masonic Lodge and we're going to try to obtain that piece of property so that we can again separate some traffic and make that a little more efficient. Also with the train track there that's a that's another issue that we have to deal with. Forest Glen, again, a front facade change, safety and security. Uh, actually, redesigning some of the inside, we're actually able to gain two extra classrooms within that facility without expanding outside the four walls. So we're gonna be able to grow that building as well. 
and again, uh, touching the site plan to give it some alternates there as well. Winding ridge, uh, again, uh, front facade, safety security. We're also redesigning some inside that will give them uh, additional space that they are needing to support their current curriculum. And the winding ridge side, you'll notice we have two buildings on that side, uh, Mary Castle, Brook Park, and uh, maybe Douglas. We have the four early learning centers, and we're touching each of those. Uh, this year in the early learning center at Amy Beverly, we're going to do some site improvements there as part of the elementary renovation, and then we'll touch that building inside later. But part of their curriculum, both inside and outside, we got some uh, few changes, path flows, uh, kitchen upgrades, and again, the front entry, uh, safety and security, and again, the playground area, which is very important for their accreditation as an early learning center. So you show Mary Castle ELC. We did Mary Castle Elementary renovation uh, uh, a couple years ago and also did some site work that also included the, the uh, ELC. So that will, again, we'll do some more work on the playground area. Winding Ridge, those are the playground areas that we'll be touching for the ELCs. And that should take us through those buildings. All right, thank you, Robert Smith. Now it's time for this uh, Michael gets a picture of the group. They want to know how much this is going to cost, how we're going to be able to do it. And so we need to talk about what we're going to need from the community in order to make this happen. Uh, we're going to have to ask the community to support their permission to do this. And that is called a school referendum. And so, Mr. Shreves, are you ready? Talk about this. Good evening. As he said, this is a lot of work to be done. The total price, I don't know if it was up there or not, but is $191 million. We talked about the assessed valuation earlier of the district being over five billion. That's to our advantage. We can do all this work for just under 25 cents per about $100 of assessed valuation. Now, what's that gonna to do to our tax rate? So if we look at the next slide, you can see the first arrow to the right is where we currently are. We're at 0.9925 cents. That's your tax rate. We're the fourth lowest in Marion County. Next year, Washington Township will go past us because they've got, they just passed a referendum. It'll come on their tax roll in 2020. Even after adding 25 cents to our tax rate, we're still in the same position we were before. Now, I know the burning question is, how much will that cost me as a taxpayer? So we got this slide here. We've got various market values of the home, what the net assessed value is, and what your monthly impact is. And the median, back up for a second. Yeah. The median price home in Lawrence Township is $153,600. And if you equate that over on the monthly impact, it's $14 a month. And eventually we'll have a tax calculator so you can take your own assessed value off of your property tax statements that you're given from the county treasurer, punch in the numbers, and it will show you what your exact impact is. Thank you, Mr. Shreves. Cut. All right, Mr. Shreves, our CFO. Kathy, go ahead, let's go to the next one, because I certainly want to be conscientious of our time and allow for us to get to questions. Is that, what have our neighboring school districts uh, done? So these are all of our neighbors, folks. Uh, all of our neighbors have had to do referendums. They've already passed referendums. So from a competitive standpoint, uh, we, we've got to be on top of it, folks. Uh, our neighbors to the West Washington Township last year just passed a referendum. And our tax rate, as Mr. Shoe said, will be lower than theirs once theirs come on the tax rolls. So that we need to know that, folks. But quality students support property values. And so, I, and I can read this to you, but you can read that very quickly, folks. I think it's pretty, I think you understand that. Uh, people move to your community because of what you have in the amenities. Uh, schools are important, okay? Affordable housing, and we have both. You have great schools, you have affordable housing. And so folks are moving into our community. All right? It's an investment. 
So we have worked very, very hard, folks, to come up with a strategy that we believe is going to be fair to all. At the same time, being able to give our kids the very best designs and the very best environments for their children to learn, your children to learn in. Okay? All right? It is, for the high school, a $161 million investment. Go to the next one. It is a $30 million investment in our elementary that we mentioned. Okay? And your vote will count. You're all citizens, patrons. I see some of our teachers here. We're all in this together. It is our community, so your vote matters. But we're not going to take anyone for granted. We're going to get out and talk to everyone and make sure that everyone understands what we're trying to do for our children and our community. Because, I'm going to tug on, on your hearts here, because those are our students. Yes, our girls did make it to the state championship. We lost to the district to the north of us. We want to beat them next year. I'm very competitive, folks. We have to be. And we will. Because they matter. And they matter. And let's go to the end. Because that's the future, folks. That's Lawrence Township Schools. Okay? Let's close down, Kathy. So for next steps, we're going to do another community forum next week. And this is to gauge input from the community. And then I'm going to ask permission of the Board of Education for us to move forward. But before we do that, we want to make sure that our community fully understands what we're discussing. That's why we're having a meeting tonight. We'll have another one next week. We actually had a meeting a couple of weeks ago with the business community, the Chamber of Commerce. And we're going to put all this information out for the public at large to see and hear to give us feedback before any decisions are going to be made. The Board of Education at the April 22nd meeting will have to make a decision whether they support this by allowing us to move forward with the first step in the project. Okay? Let's stop. Questions? Can I have my team come forward? Did anyone in the room, do you have questions you wrote now? You can get them to us. Okay, we got folks that are going to come around the room to grab those for you. So I've got my cabinet members, my assistant superintendents. And then we're going to have Ms. Rogers come on the stage. She's from communications. You can help us read them. And Dr. Smith will, and his team will answer the questions very quickly. And we're also going to be speaking to our people who are watching on Facebook Live. Okay? two meetings by statute. The first one we're planning is April 22nd, and then we would have to go to a board meeting in May, I believe it's May 8th, and then at that point we could then put it on the ballot. We would want to go out for the referendum, we have to go out for the referendum in fall, the November of the election, I believe it's November the 5th, is when the election is, to get permission from our patrons. We have to get the majority of the taxpayers in Lawrence Township to vote yes for it. Okay, then the next question is when will it be voted on and that would be in the November election? That would be in the November election. Okay. Uh, what is the backup plan if the referendum doesn't pass? Ooh, yeah. That's a hard question for Dr. Smith. I love you. <laughs> I do. You're a great community. Uh, and we always have a plan. We have a plan. That's why we're here today, because we have a plan. Uh, the reality of it is, my Shreves, is let's talk about for the high schools. Because that would be very devastating. How long would it take for us to go through a process to get them renovated at the standard we just presented? Under the new current statute, the board can only approve up to $25 million of new construction and not have to go through this process per year. So if you take $25 million and go $190, you're looking at eight years just to raise the money for this. 
So it would take us a long time. And so that would be two classes. Well, there would be two classes of kids that would be loaded. You know. This project, what we're proposing for the, for the community, is a 20-year project. It's going to impact two generations of students. So I'm going to go back. We want to win this referendum. This is for our community. We want the students for the next two generations to enjoy what we all did for great high schools, great facilities, great schools. Okay. Okay, you touched on this, but the next question is, what's the projected time frame, assuming the referendum passes? The projected time frame is, if approved in November, we will be able to start construction in 2020. 2020 is when we would start. Okay. Okay, and then when will this tax increase take effect? I love that question. Okay. That is a very important question. Mr. Shreves, how does that work? Because it doesn't happen right away. When will it hit their tax bills? The, the election of the referendum would go to November. We go out and issue bonds in 2020. It would show up on the tax rate in 2021. All right, we got that. Mr. Okay. Rogers? What is the plan beyond the Blue Ribbon in 2020 for the future and ongoing improvements? After this. Absolutely. We do have a plan. Uh, we have a plan that once we finish this, we're going to visit our two middle schools. They're on the docket. And once we have done that, we will have completed the Blue Ribbon Facility Plan. We're going to start all over again. Okay? Because we have 21 facilities, ladies and gentlemen. So we have to start all over again and go back through the process to put a plan in place to address our facilities for the next years ahead of us. Okay, next question is, how is the $15 million cash reserve designated to be used? Good question. Mr. Shreves, today, we're not asking the community for an operating referendum, but we want to brag about ourselves. Tell them why that's important, and what does that $15 million cash reserve do for us? Okay. We have separate funds for different things. The $15 million cash balance, 10 million of it's in our education fund, five million's in the rainy day fund. Why that's important is we have to cover our day-to-day -day operations with that. At times, the state might delay payments to us. We still have payroll to make. We use that for that so we don't have to go out and get a loan. More importantly, when we go out for bonds, the first question they ask is what kind of cash balance do you have in reserve? It allows us to get a better bond rating, which results in lower interest costs, which means we can put more money out of bond into the project. So, Mr. Shreves, for those of us that like simple, do we have the credit? Yes, we, we do. It's <laughs> important community. We're not in a position where we have had recently five years to lay off our staff, We've been able to give raises to our teachers, and maintain our district financially without any support from the outside. We are not a school corporation that's in jeopardy of being taken over by the state because of finances. We have worked very, very hard with the Board of Education. It starts with them. They set goals with me to make sure that we maintain a very strong financial footing as a community, which that allows for us to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to pay our teachers and keep the best and brightest in the school corporation. That's what the $15 million does for us. It protects us as a community. We're very proud of that. Will there be any specific outreach to our elderly households that don't have kids at the schools currently? Absolutely. We know who you are, community. Those out in, on Facebook Live. We know that a majority of our community patrons don't have children in school. They did. But we're not going to take anyone for granted. Once the board approves for us to do this, when it's official, we will have to go out and engage the entire community from top to bottom and ask for their support for this because we understand where people are financially. We don't want to overburden our community, but at the same time, we have a great opportunity because of the value of our community, because we have great resources to reinvest back into the corporation for the future. We're very fortunate, Barnes Township. Okay, this is one that you touched on, but just to clarify and make sure everyone understands. If passed, how long would the process take for the high school renovations? Excellent question. They're very large, and we can't do it in one year. Can we architects? Roger Smith talked about that. 
On the average elementary, we look at an 18 month process for a full renovation to start physically. On the high schools, we're looking at three year process uh, to do the complete renovation additions, both inside the building and on the site improvement. Excellent question. Okay, and this one is about the sixth grades. Any further follow-up from the meetings discussing sixth graders? Will they stay as is? They will stay as is as of now. We do have that plan. It's, it hasn't left us. And if we see an uptick in our enrollment, we will have to bring that back out and address it. What our plan was, was because of our enrollment growth, that we would move our sixth graders to the middle school, but we would have to renovate both middle schools. We put that plan on pause because our enrollment looks like it's going to stay pretty steady. If we can accommodate our sixth graders now, as of today, in our elementaries. Now that's subject to change. If we have more elementary students come to us, we will have to bring that plan back out and begin to execute it. Okay. So as of now, the Board of Education has asked for me to put that on hold. And that plan is not far, is it, Dr. Smith and Michael Shrews? We have it. And we'll wait to see where our enrollment numbers are. Okay, could you please explain why all these renovations now? Why not spread them out over time? Why now? Why principles? Why now? Uh -huh. well, they're in need. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think the kids today, the, the kids we look at, uh, the class of 2023 matter. And so doing it now in the way the design is, it'll allow us to continue operating. Understand, we're not going to move our kids anywhere during this process. We're going to educate them during the process. And so the idea is, and the, and the great design, is that we build the new so that when that's done, we can move from the old and then begin the process of redesign of the old. And so again, it's, it's a process, but we don't shut down, not even in the summers. And so we've got to keep that going. So it's important to do this in a timely manner, not just over time, with renovation continuing in our schools. So I think a picture, picture one of me. Why now? Is it urgent for it, us to do this? Now? It is, folks. The, the scope, the scope of education, is continuing to change. We know with graduation pathways, with the incoming class of 2023, we need to be prepared to continue to grow and to prepare, prepare our students for a world that we didn't know and don't know at this time. They're entering the workforce into opportunities that they are creating, which is awesome. So we need those spaces in our schools where they are able to begin creating and designing and doing and not just sitting and listening and dealing with just a, a space issue. And I think some of our faculty members that would say, Mr. Smith, We've got some serious heating and air conditioning oh, problems that we need to we need to address. So next uh, is I am showing our funding has been reduced, but where is the funding coming from? That's an excellent question. Someone, you guys know the General Assembly is in session. Someone's paying attention, Michael Shrees. Talk about our fund because none of the funds we're talking about tonight will come from the Indiana General Assembly. Correct, Michael? Correct. But the referendum funds all come from local dollars. The funding that's been reduced that she's talking about, that's our state dollars that comes to support our education fund. The day-to-day -day operations and the teacher salaries. You may say, how do we give raises and continue to make ends meet as that's reduced? We continually look for efficiencies in our operations as to where we can be more efficient so we can re-channel those dollars and be able to pay the teachers with those. But we very much do dependent upon our state legislators because that's how we pay our teachers and our faculty members, is the funds that we receive from Capital Street. And that's really important, but that's separate from this. As a community, we could keep all of our local money and put it into our schools, we would need any help. But that wouldn't be fair to other parts of the state of Indiana. So the state of Indiana has a funding formula where they take all, all the tax dollars and then they redistribute those for educating students throughout the state of Indiana. Okay. Are you considering renewable energy options or solar energy? Mr. Smith, are you ready for that? We're constantly looking at ways uh, to curb our day-to-day -day operations. We have been checking into the solar. 
and what kind of applications. Uh, in some cases, solar would not fit because of the size and location of the facilities, but we have some that may benefit from that. Also, in all of our renovations, we're looking at efficiency of the boilers and LED lighting. So we're constantly looking at ways that it's gonna improve the overall <laughs> cost that we put out uh, to run our buildings and be able to use that, as Mr. Shrees talked about, on the operation and the education. Okay, uh, when do the middle schools get updated? We actually have a date on that, Mr. Smith, which is very cool. We do have a blue ribbon plan, and right now that coincides with the uh, financing, so we work with Mr. Free very closely. And our blue ribbon is a, a every other year, 19, uh, 21, and 23. Looking at the, this plan, uh, moving forward, 2020, we'll have several buildings in renovation, and then uh, the middle schools will come on board in uh, 2023. Both at the same time. Both Some of them are both ramped up, trying to do with our two high schools. Treat them as twins. I think we can run the lease together. How will the referendum money be used? How does Lawrence Township spending compare to neighboring districts? And how is the money used in the last three years for previous non reoccurring spend? Okay. Let's go to the first question. The first question, Kathy. How will the referendum money be used? Well, there's a very specific market trees how we have to do that. Yeah, the referendum money has to be used on the projects we identify that we go to the taxpayers to ask them to vote for. So in this case, it would be both high schools, the four elementaries, and the four ELCs that are mentioned. And no other projects, specifically for those projects that are on the ballot. How does Lawrence Township spending compare with neighboring districts? How do we compare to other neighboring districts? Well, I, mean, I don't know if we could go back, but all your other neighbors have all had to do operating referendums. All of our neighbors to raise more money for their day-to-day -day operations. Lawrence Township has not. That's huge. They have all done referendums for their buildings. So they wanna be competitive. They wanna attract people to their community. They've all had to do that. We have not done that yet. So financially, we're in a really good spot compared to our neighbors, okay? Is that correct, Michael? Okay. You heard that from the CPA? Who likes counting that? How was the money used in the last three years for previous non-reoccurring expenditures? Non-reoccurring expenditures. I'm not sure I understand that one. Um, our cash balance, did you get that, Mark? Did you? I'm assuming that they get in trouble sometimes. Okay. If not, we'll call that person out. I didn't want to call anyone out, but we may need you to come up here with us on that one. Go ahead, Michael. If, if it involves like our last renovations that we've done and how we've used that, and the reason we've been able to do that with no increase to the taxpayers, we have debt coming off, so we just reissued that debt on the new projects, and it was always used on those projects that it was designed for. Keeping our tax rate level without taxpayers having to have an increase in your bill. That is very unique. A lot of school corporations can't do that. That's why many of them have gone to public referendums in order to renovate their buildings or to add on to them. Okay, and our last question. If the high schools are in need of many repairs, why did you choose to spend money on updating the football track, baseball, softball facilities? That's an excellent question. Why did we do that? I can speak to one our football or just multi-purpose. Lawrence North could not host any type of marching band activity either. The way the fencing was around, the way the equipment comes in and leaves the field could not happen. The other thing was, if you've ever been in the locker room on a rainy night underneath those bleachers, it rained into the locker room, right on in. And so as we went through and looked at the need for the different facilities and the scope and sequence of the scope of the project in comparison to the scope of what we're doing for the building, it was that need. Again, the same thing with our softball. Say, if you it came out to anything here at North North, our girls went and won the sectional. We were the host of the regional. Couldn't fit her, but couldn't see uh, because of the way our, our fencing was. So again, there were, there were reasons why, 
in that scope at that time that it was needed here at Cohen's Horn. And I'll go ahead and even say, uh, looking at where, in, in my personal opinion, uh, looking at where you have immediate impact, and when you have the immediate impact with the cost of it and being able to do it as a, as a district level, and, you, and looking at the multi-purpose facilities and all the forum, you're dealing with hundreds and hundreds of people. Uh, and so uh, looking at the grand scheme of renovating a complete high school uh, and looking at the cost of those projects compared to that, it's, it's not even comparable. And so how do you have an immediate impact where where you're servicing families and you're servicing your students and you're servicing the elder, our elementary babies come onto our, our property as well. We look at it, we have LTBBL on both of our campuses. Where do you have the immediate impact to upgrade our facilities um, and make them attractive uh, and competitive for our families and then get to, to the big project of, you know, the, this is the overall to get the high schools to where they need. And Mr. Smith, when we had the Blue Ribbon Facility Committee, we ranked those early projects based on the need, the evaluation. And some of our facilities were, quite frankly, folks, just a floor. Uh, we don't, we're hosting events and, and this is who we are. Well, we don't have the two restrooms in our locker rooms for our young men and women. I mean, it's just unacceptable. And Mr. Krause was nice, but it did rain inside the locker room. I witnessed that myself. And I witnessed only two restrooms in there, and, and our young men, a lot of people cut in front of them. I mean, they, they're, they're great kids, but it was just bad. And so we had to address those things, and those things have allowed for us to do great things with our students over the last three years since we built those facilities. So in the end, it, those are for the youngsters also. Okay? Ms. Rogers, did we receive all the questions? This has been a fantastic audience. I'm conscientious about your time, folks. I want to thank you personally for taking time out to spend an hour with us and those of you who are on social media. Uh, and if you want to watch it again, it will be there. Mr. Britt, thank you for doing that for us. And as we said, we're going to be here to stay. If you have any questions that you would like from us, additional questions, we're going to be here with you. And we will be live again next week, next Wednesday, same time. Well, we'll be at Lawrence Central High School with the Bears. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you.